Not keeping up with your blood work is something that can literally mean the difference between life or death. And it's just as important to get it checked as it is to know when something is wrong and then to be able to read it because doctors can make mistakes, just like mine did. When I started my weight loss journey, my ALTs, my liver enzymes, ended up going all the way to 1500 when the normal reference range is 70. Three weeks later, they increased again all the way to 2,940. 3,000 being clinical liver failure. And this is something that my doctor missed both times. I was the one who caught it. This means that I was on the brink of liver failure and when your liver fails, you either need to get incredibly aggressive treatments, a liver transplant, or you can be absolutely shit out of luck and unfortunately, your odds of survival are very bad. But the scariest part about this entire experience is that I had no symptoms. I was completely asymptomatic. So there was no real way to tell other than through my blood work. So my question to you is how many of you are taking your health seriously enough to get your blood work done regularly? Because here are some horror stories of some that didn't. Sarita Williams had a pulmonary embolism in 2011. And this is something that could have been picked up quite easily through a blood test if they would have noticed that her clotting factors were high. And then she could have been treating it for prevention instead of actually letting the pulmonary embolism happen. Or Charlie Sheen had his HIV diagnosis very late, which means that he put at risk every single one of his partners and people that he interacted with until he eventually found out. And then we have a very famous one in the fitness community, Rich Piana actually died of a heart attack after being very open about his steroid use and after admitting that he was not regularly monitoring his health. Meaning that finding that having elevated troponin levels or that his cholesterols were in a really bad place could have been enough to potentially save his life. And there's so many more deaths that go undocumented just because they're not celebrities. And the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine has noted that 58% of anabolic users do not regularly get their blood work done. And now we're gonna mix that study with the fact that a study from the internal medicine has stated that 88% of anabolic users had elevated enzyme levels or had potential liver scarring or disease. And now that we know why it's so important to be getting your blood work done regularly, let's go over some of the basic markers that you should be keeping an eye out for when you get your blood checked. And we're gonna figure out what could be making them bad and how to possibly improve them. But before we do that, if you could throw me a sub, that would be absolutely amazing. We are trying to hit a goal of 50K by the end of the year. It is a little bit audacious, yes, but I think we can do it. If you already are, drop any comment or an emoji in the comment section. I would love to see if you are still watching, but now let's get back to it. And as for the enzymes, we are going to start with the ALT and AST, which are your liver enzymes. So if these are elevated, that means that your liver is under stress and or potentially actually injured. Things that can make it bad are anabolic steroids, frequent alcohol consumption, or the overusage of certain painkillers, like let's say Tylenol. And things that can fix it are again, avoiding toxic substances, avoiding overusing of those painkillers, reducing alcohol content, and then potentially using different compounds that could support your liver, like milk thistle or NEC. Bringing us next to the cholesterol, your LDL and your HDL. So a high LDL or your bad cholesterol, or a low HDL, which is your good cholesterol, could mean that you are at higher risk for any sort of cardiovascular disease. Things that can make it work are obviously abusing PEDs and having a diet rich in fats like trans fats and saturated fats, and obviously having a sedentary behavior or not moving a lot. The things that can help make this healthier is by having a steady cardiovascular routine and practicing cardio once in a while and also having regular and also doing regular exercises and having a diet high in fiber and healthy fats such as omega-3s. Now onto the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. And having elevated signs of these can mean that your blood is getting thicker, which means that you are at a higher risk of blood clots and strokes as well as heart attacks. Things that make it bad. I'm just gonna stop saying PEDs because that pretty much makes every single one of them bad, but also things like just dehydration can actually raise those levels. Things that can make it better is being very well hydrated, drink your water. And some things like blood donations can actually help lower those levels. If recommended by a doctor, obviously, and I am not that. Another thing that can help is having adequate iron level intake. Moving on to the kidney functions, which would be your creatinine or your BUN, your bun. And this is crucial to know for some people that are having high protein diets or using certain supplements. So other than PEDs, other things that can make it bad would be using diuretics or consuming too much protein content without being properly hydrated. Well, things that can help that would be drinking plenty of water and moderating your protein intake to something that actually makes sense. So those people that say they're eating four to 500 grams of protein, 
I, I don't know why. Moving on to the blood glucose levels. Now for those, there's gonna be a few. There's gonna be the actual insulin monitoring. There's gonna be your glucose levels. They're gonna be your A1C. But elevated levels of these means that you could be pre-diabetic or that you are insulin resistant. And this is especially relevant to anybody that is on a weight loss journey. So things that can make it bad are actually growth hormone abuse or high intake of refined sugars or obviously a lack of exercise. All things that can make it better, be regular exercise, and of course, limiting the processed food intake, limiting the amount of refined sugars that you're intaking. Drop the candy bar. And then we have your testosterone and your estrogen levels. And imbalances here can pretty much affect everything in your body, including your mood, to your energy levels, to your well, drive, your motivation, as well as your ability to burn fat, your metabolic speed, and I'm running out of fingers here, but so many other issues like cardiovascular disease. And things that can make this bad actually are chronic stress or if you have a very bad sleep pattern. Obviously again, PED abuse. Well, things that can make it better are proper sleep management and actually some natural supplements like vitamin D or zinc. And now we have your CRP or your C-reactive protein. And this pretty much means your entire body's inflammatory response or your entire body's infl inflammation marker. If the levels are elevated, that means that your body is under stress and that you have a lot of inflammation, which can obviously put you then at risk at cardiovascular disease and attacks. Things that can make this bad are overtraining, stimulant abuse, poor diet, chronic stress. If you have some sort of autoimmune disease like my Crohn's disease, which is why mine is usually a little bit elevated. Well, things that can make it better would be anti-inflammatory foods. So let's say fatty fishes or leafy greens, as well as regular exercise, stress management, and the ability to prioritize your recovery. Well, the last one we're going to talk about here is thyroid function. So your TSH, your T3, and your T4. And abnormal levels here means that your metabolism will be directly affected or that you might be entering and or be hypo or hyperthyroidism. And things that can make it bad here, especially in the bodybuilding world, would be to abuse certain drugs like T3 or T4, those thyroid hormones, or having a diet that is not high enough in iodine. All things that make it better would be obviously having a diet balanced with a decent amount of iodine as well as selenium. And then regular exercise and avoiding unnecessary hormone manipulation. Now, getting your blood work really is not a hard process to do. And there's two real ways that you can do this. One, you go to a walk-in clinic or you ask your primary care physician, they'll get you requisition. And then you go to your laboratory, get your blood drawn. And then the annoying part is that sometimes you have to actually go back to the doctor's office to get your blood work evaluated. Or there is another option. If you are in the States, what you can do, there are many companies that actually have the option to purchase blood requisition forms right then and there without actually having to go through a clinic and then talking to a doctor. And Transcend is one of those companies, so if you're in the States, then this is an easy access to that. You can just go to any of these websites, you purchase the blood requisition form, you go to a lab core, or if you are super rich, you can just have a phlebotomist come to you at your house, draw your blood, and you're good to go. And I know that soon there will be actually kits that will be getting sent out, so you can do your blood test right there at home, on your couch. So it's really not that hard and just please, 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 if there's anything that you're gonna take from this video is trust me when I say that no matter where you live on this planet, prevention will always be cheaper than treatment, recovery and rehabilitation. But I will always encourage everybody to know, be your own health advocate. Find out what is going on within your body because it's not always that obvious and you could be completely asymptomatic while experiencing some very bad things internally. And especially if you are about to embark on any sort of fitness journey, whether it be muscle building or fat loss, knowing these results could significantly help you with your progress. Because what is the point of making all this progress, working this hard, if you miss something and you won't be here anymore to be able to enjoy it? I personally get my blood tested every single month because I have Crohn's disease and I wanna make sure that I'm still healthy while taking these very hard medications. But at the end of the day, do not let your health be a guessing game. Know your numbers, protect your body, protect your health, and live a better life. And with that, I hope everybody has a good day.